Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. The novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick tells the story of a society so devoid of genuine human connection that its citizens plug into empathy boxes just for a chance to feel a connection with humanity, of a world so decimated by nuclear war that most animals have gone extinct of a world in which we've created an entire class of disposable people and forced them into servitude. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep is obviously one of Philip K. Dick's classic books, but it often gets overshadowed by its adaptation. But the interesting fact is, this book thematically says something fundamentally different from the Blade Runner movie. Essentially, the movie is saying something to the effect of the androids are really just like us. The book, however, is much more nuanced. The concept of empathy is brought up over and over in this book. What is empathy? Is empathy necessary? Is empathy even real? We learn early on that the main difference between androids and humans is that humans can feel empathy while androids supposedly cannot. Curiously, we carry this fact in our head while also seeing the humans in the story also not behave with very much empathy, and there are certain humans in fact, like Phil Resch, who behave far more soullessly than the androids. And yet we are still shown again and again cases of androids clearly not possessing empathy, like for instance the spider dissecting scene. Like I said, most animals have gone extinct in this world, so living creatures are very rare. You have the character Isidore who finds a spider and he shows it to the androids who he's helping out. And then he's horrified when the android Pris dissects the spider right in front of him. The android doesn't necessarily behave maliciously, it simply just does not feel empathy for this living creature and is fine with cutting off its legs one by one to see if it can still walk. So a big theme in this book revolves around examining the artificial mechanisms by which we engage with our own emotions and our own humanity. So I mentioned the empathy box, but they also have devices which allow them to dial in specific moods. So rather than letting emotions come and go naturally, emotions are now delegated to a machine, just as empathy is now delegated to a machine. Another aspect to this is, there is want and desire in their society, but there is no fulfillment. Having a living animal in this society is seen as a great status symbol, so everyone wants a living animal, but they're very, very expensive. So most people settle with electric animals, so that's where the title comes from, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, and there's more to that title that we'll talk about in just a second. The main character, Deckard, is a bounty hunter, and bounty hunters hunt down androids who have escaped their masters on Mars and come to Earth to hide. And he's doing the specific job that he's on in this book, hunting down the Nexus 6 models because he wants to buy a living goat for his wife. So all genuine human emotion is delegated to a machine and everyone is obsessed with acquiring what are essentially meaningless objects. And even empathy is reduced to something that is ultimately false, something that is ultimately artificial. And in the real world, humans don't seem to engage very empathetically with each other. So if you've noticed the similarities between what I've described in this book and the modern world, then you're not alone in noticing that. I can't help but think of the internet when I think of the empathy box and the idea of this artificial way of engaging with empathy. Like you'll see a children's hospital burn down, one like equals one prayer. And you got all these people liking it, and something about that artificial expression of empathy engages a similar area in their brain so they don't feel the need to be empathetic in their real life, because I like this post online. It's a very weird phenomenon, 
but something that definitely happens. So I don't think Philip K. Dick is necessarily saying androids are just like us. He's saying that there is something about humans that is different, the fact that we have the capacity for empathy. But he's also giving us a warning that basically says we shouldn't become like them. That on this evolutionary journey that we're on, we should not lose our empathy for each other and for life in general. So let's break down the title of this book. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? So as I mentioned, the only thing people really want in this society is to acquire these electric animals. So the question in the title is essentially asking, what do androids want? What do they desire? Are they the same as our desires? For humans, empathy is a choice. You can choose to be a monster like Phil Resch, or you can choose to be a better person. Now, this book is full of really interesting concepts, and I want to dive more into some of them in other videos, but right now I really want to get to something that I found extremely interesting. This book brings into question, what even is real? What does artificial mean? Does it matter if anything is artificial? This is such an interesting book and a little bit of a confusing book because you end up questioning every aspect of it to the point where by the end, I don't even think it's clear whether or not Deckard himself is human or android. Yes, it is pretty much established that androids can't feel empathy, but empathy can be a choice and it is implied that the androids might be able to feel empathy for similar androids to themselves. So if that's possible, then maybe empathy in general is possible. But I think what's important is it's making us ponder the question, does it really matter? And I think that's the point. Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't, but that's up to us as society to figure that out for ourselves. So at the end of the book, you have Deckard encountering a frog out in the desert. He brings it home, he gives it to his wife, and then she tells him that it's electric. And also a kind of creepy addition to this is that we have no idea how that frog got into the desert. An electric frog just doesn't appear in the desert. Someone had to put it there. That aside, at the end of the book, although the frog is electric, Deckard's wife begins to care for it. She orders a terrarium for it and fake flies for it. So ultimately, it doesn't matter whether the frog is electric or living. So in future videos, we'll talk about the empathy boxes and the religion of mercerism that is surrounding them. We'll also dive more into the concept of a disposable race of people and compare and trust how it's handled in this book to other science fiction stories because a lot of other stories have also done this concept. So this novel is actually quite short, but it's also very dense and it's written in a way that might confuse certain people. So if you're not used to reading Philip K. Dick, you might be thrown off slightly by the writing style, but just know you don't have to understand it the first time you read it. The book is meant to make you ponder for a long time on certain concepts, and even hardcore Philip K. Dick fans will admit that Philip K. Dick does at times kind of have a strange writing style. That doesn't make it any less enjoyable for me, but I'm also a weirdo. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas. Tell me what science fiction books you'd like to see me cover next on this YouTube channel. Just a heads up for those of you that may be interested, my next graphic novel, The Lie Behind the Star, is launching February 2023. You can sign up now to get on the email mailing list to get notified as soon as it launches. More information on my website, link in the description. Thank you guys so much.